So Cherry Audio have gone and done it again just when you think they've run out of mad old crazy synths to emulate, they come out with this. It's the PS3300 from Korg. I think this was released back in 1977 and it's a really rare semi-modular synth. Really quite cool and quite crazy as you might expect from these old things. What we've got here is actually three polyphonic synths. So these three voices that you can see in these sections, one, two and three, three separate polyphonic synths. Almost completely self-contained polysynths. We've got divide down oscillators, which means you can play everything. That works a bit like a Selena string synth, something like that, I think. Basically old organ technology, but it just means that you can play massive chords. Scary, massive chords. So yeah, we've got an oscillator. Each of these is exactly the same, one, two, and three. We've got an oscillator with various waveforms. A low pass filter. We've got the PS filter on this, which was like a calmer version of the MS20, so they've put the MS20 in there as well on this. An ADSR envelope. This resonator, which is basically three band pass filters. Amp modulation and a couple of LFOs. And these are like the LFO controls. Plus a load of inputs and a few outputs on each of them. Over on the right hand side, everything's pulled together by a little mixer of voltage processors, sample and hold, another envelope generator, this is just delay, attack and release, plus we've got their chorus, echo, reverb and limiter as well, so a few little nice effects thrown in at the end. Along the bottom here we can see we've got all the notes from C up to B and this is where we can just fine tune the notes to get them sounding a bit sloppy. I think maybe they've put that there because, well I don't think it was on the original but I think they've put that there because means that you can make things sound a little bit looser than you'd normally get with a divide down circuit so you can fine tune each of the notes. So, C, let's go here. Nicely out of tune or you can pick different temperaments from here. Anyway, let's go to equal tempered to make it sound in tune. Okay, I'll play with this one here, number three, just because it's sort of central to the screen. We've got Triangle, so. Then we've got three different pulse widths, just like you get on the mini mode. But here we also have PWM. And unlike the mini mode, we have PWM. We've got the PWM intensity with this knob here, and this is modulated by MG2, which is basically LFO2, which is this little one down here, so. And we can have a static pulse width from that as well using these voltage processors. I'll go into those in more details later, but if I just bring I just bring a voltage out and bring it to the external PWM control down there. These are the inputs, as I say, and if we click on an input, it shows you what you can connect it to. So to the outputs, all the other inputs are grayed out. Same with the outputs. If I put this to here, we can't put it in another output. And if we click on these, just once with the mouse, you get six inputs, so super flexible. So now, I'm controlling the pulse width statically. We've got a tune knob and we've got the scale knob. We've got that sync at the minute. If we take the sync off, it goes up to 4,000 hertz. So the modulation's on the bottom and the main parameters are across the top. So let's take that modulation off for now. Let me look at the filter. Put it onto the MS, it's a bit more harsh. Let's bring it into a sawtooth. Wow. <laughs> 
PS is like I say, it's a little bit more gentle, genteel. That's because it was a polysyn. Let's get the down an octave or two. So really meaty MS-20. And a much more sedate, but really nice that, isn't it? Keyboard filter balance, I've got it on minus five here, which means it's going to be duller on the high notes. You can hear that really quietly and we go lower, nice and bright. If we put it up, keyboard tracking effectively this is. Let's turn that up. Then go down a couple of octaves. And then envelope mod as well. And here we've got the envelope, it's an ADSR. It's slightly different to the original one. It had a weird release thing on the, uh, sort of weird release switches on the original, which are a bit fiddly. So they've done the right thing and just made it nice and simple and easy to use. Let's bring the sustain level down, a bit of decay. Turn the envelope mod up. All very familiar stuff so far. Move it over a little bit more. We can see the keyboard the sign. We've got mono modes or poly mode. We're in poly at the minute. A little bit more release. And you can hear we've got loads of polyphony. Let's just test out that polyphony, shall we? Yeah, and then we've got last note or high note priority as well. We're still sticking to well-trodden territory here. Uh, next up, keyboard volume balance. So at zero, it's the same volume, low notes or high notes. Take that release off. But if we go to five, it's much louder on the high notes. We go to minus five, it's much louder. Let's go a little bit higher, it's much louder on the low notes. So that's a little bit strange. <laughs> we've got a signal out for that so that we can use that to modulate things if we want. And then we come down to this resonators and this is really cool. These are three separate bandpass, 12 dB bandpass filters. And each one of them can be set at a different frequency and then we can change the amount of the effect here. So basically turn the filter up as it were or turn the resonator up. So let's put resonators two and three. Well, let's put them all on 10 kilohertz. Apparently this is way above 10 kilohertz. So there's one, there's two, there's three. And then we can modulate all these with modulation generator two. So we get a really nice phasery type effect. Oh, that's the high star, isn't it? Let's put on a chord. So that's a really nice, unique effect. Then we've got amp modulation as well. Uh, let's just take the resonators off. Let's modulate the amplitude, turn it on there. So it's modulating it with modulation generator one. And again, we're going into, um, into FM territory. I 
don't think you can modulate the frequency of the LFOs with um, with the keyboard. I've been looking, um, and I've not found a way to do it yet. The outputs we get from the keyboard, the pitch bend, mod wheel, velocity, then we get these gates, and the gates are pretty weird, actually. We've got gates and trigs, then this keyboard gate select, and the keyboard gate select will basically send a gate if you've got one note on there, two notes there, three notes, etc. So you get the gates depending on the amount of keys that you're pressing or the number of keys that you're pressing. That's a pure 70s bit of nuts as well. Reading in the manual, they think that's some sort of uh, velocity sensitivity when you didn't have velocity sensitivity on the keyboard. So you could do things when it got louder, when you hit more notes. And anyway, this brings us to the panel on the right hand side. And this is where everything's brought together. We've got a little mix up at the top. We can turn them on or off. We've got level controls or level CV ins for each of them as well. So the three oscillators. So we've got one on at the minute or number three. Let's just make that a little bit more like a standard tone. Bring two in. I'm modulating that one as well, am I? I've been playing around with this for a fair bit now. And then number one as well. So that's a single note of three of the oscillators, or three of the synths, I should say, really. It's a bit bizarre. So you can hear there, number three has got a lot of release on it and the others don't. So you can instantly hear that it's three separate synth voices, can't you? But each of those. Is its own voice. So hours and hours worth of fun uh, in this. So if we did want to modulate the amplitude, for example, we've got a level in on the signal mix, so we could use this modulation generator there. So let's take that, put that into there. Let's let's just reduce the rate there. And if we wanted to reduce the amount of that modulation, this is where these control voltage processors come in. We can limit the range. So got. Um, input from the mod generator and we'll put the output into the level control so let's just let's just set minimums and maximums for those cvs This switch is listening to either input one or input two. Let's bring the others back in and let's pan it a little bit. Something like this. Shooting that one a little bit, turn it into, I don't know, a triangle. Or we could modulate the volume of the whole thing. Put on a square wave. So we've had the chorus. Just 
just having a play with this end panel. Got sample and hold here as well. Let's turn all this off for now. Sample and hold has noise going in by default, but we'll put sample and hold out. Let's modulate. Let's modulate the frequency of this oscillator here or this voice here, whatever you want to call it. So sample and hold out, go into the external frequency control. So let's turn that off as well. Turn the external up. You can hear it working already. If you want to trigger that, maybe we're just when you're hitting the keyboard, we'll put that into the clock or the input. Envelope generator, we don't need to show what that does, do we? We do have inputs actually I've not mentioned for the attack and the release of the envelopes on each of the voices down here. That's the attack and that's the release. But yeah, another envelope there. We've looked at the control voltage processors, but we haven't showed you it going inverted. So if A is above B, it inverts the signal. So let's just have a play with that. Let's get rid of these. So three's ramping down. And two. And two is ramping up using the same LFO. We're getting the down ramp from the LFO. Which is what it's set at. But if we put A below B, it reverses that. So... One going up, one going down, but both coming from the same LFO. And that was a real quick whistle stop tour of how it all works. It's a bit confusing when you first look at it, but actually, once you understand what all the parts do, it's just like any other synth, but slightly different and a little bit easy. Anyway, um, I hope that made sense to you. Um, it makes sense to me, but uh, that doesn't mean much. And I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please think about subscribing, ring the bell, join me over on Patreon. I've got plenty of patches and samples and all that sort of stuff over there. And I've also got that sort of stuff on my StarskyCar.com website as well, where you can get the free stuff or you can buy stuff and support the channel. Up to you. Uh, nice if you bought it, because it all does help. Anyway, I will see you next time.